What's up guys, my name is ESO and in today's video I'll be going over every single strength perk card, all 30 of them, and telling you if they're worth taking or not. Now the strength stat will definitely interest you if you're playing a melee character, but if you're playing a sniper based character, I'd actually not invest in this stat at all. Since there are mutations in the game, like eagle eyes, which give you plus 25% critical damage and plus 4 perception, which makes it possible to actually hit over 2000 damage, but at the cost of minus 4 strength. So investment into strength for ranged characters can actually be pointless depending on how you're building your character. If you're unsure, you can follow one of my build guides linked below in the description though. Now each point invested into strength will give you an additional 5 carry weight, but you start off the game with a carry weight of 155. So at max strength, which is 15, you'll have a carry weight of 225. Each point of strength will also increase your melee damage by 1, which doesn't sound like a lot, but after you add up all of the percentage based perk cards, it adds up to quite a bit. It's also important to note that if you're in power armor, your strength gets set to 11 as default. Even if you have a strength of 1 or 5, your strength will always be set to 11. So that's why it's optimal for a sniper build to leave their strength at 1 and then just wear power armor if you want to carry around extra weight. If you're a melee character however, it's it's definitely worth leveling your strength to level 15 for the benefits of the perk cards. Once your strength surpasses power armor though, getting into power armor will no longer give you any bonus carry weight unless you're using the mining extractor set, which gives you plus 100 carry weight. And there's a guide on how to find that specific power armor linked down below in the description. Now you understand how the strength stat works, let's go over all of the perk cards. I'm going to go over them in the order that you unlock them while leveling, but I'm also going to categorize them into damage, carry weight, utility and so on, just so it's really easy to follow. I've put timestamps linked below in the description for each perk card, so favorite this video and you can use it as a reference point in the future if you're not sure about something. Starting out with the Gladiator perk card, you will also unlock the Expert Gladiator perk card at level 20, and finally the Master Gladiator perk card at level 43. Each perk card, once maxed out, will increase your one-handed melee damage by 20% in total. So having all three perk cards maxed out will mean you do 90% more damage with one-handed melee weapons. Having all of these perk cards slotted at once will take up 9 out of 15 perk card slots. But you're probably wondering, are one-handed weapons better than two-handed weapons? Well, in short, one-handed weapons have a higher damage per second. I'll explain why later, but two-handed weapons hit much harder. And in player versus player, I find each blow counts because nobody will just stand there and let you hit them repeatedly. So power wins over damage per second. Also, you get better sneak attacks if you can pull off a sneak attack because it's really hard to do. The Slugger perk is unlocked at level 6. Expert Slugger is unlocked at level 24 and Master Slugger is unlocked at level 48. Again, each perk card increases your damage by 20% for a total of 60% damage increase. And since two-handed weapons just have a higher damage, the percentage increase in damage is going to be more efficient. But now it gets interesting because we have the Iron Fist perk, unlocked at level five, and it's the only unarmed perk card in the game. It makes your punching attacks do plus 20% damage at max rank. What a lot of people do not know, however, is that weapons like the Mole Rat Gauntlet or the Deathclaw Gauntlet, any fist weapon pretty much, are actually affected by both the Iron Fist perk and the Gladiator perks as well. This means if you're using the fist weapon and you have all of these equipped, you'll actually get an extra 80% damage boost 
instead of 60%. This means that fist-based weapons have the highest damage per second in the game. But obviously, the drawback is it takes up 12 per card slots, which is not ideal on a melee build, because it means that you have to either give up armor penetration or attack speed. And arguably, damage per second again is not the best thing in player versus player because nobody's going to stand there and let you hit them repeatedly. You'll be running after people and be lucky to get a hit in. The next damage based perk card is the shotgunner, unlocked at level 10. Expert shotgunner is unlocked at level 23 and finally the master shotgunner unlocked at level 45. Altogether, they take up 9 perk card slots and increase your damage by 60% with shotguns. Now shotguns are awesome, they're fun, I love them, but I find melee weapons better because they have the armor penetration perk. And if you're that close, I mean you might as well be meleeing them anyway because you do more damage. The last damage based perk card is the heavy gunner, unlocked at level 30, then expert unlocked at level 40 and master at level 50. This makes your non-explosive heavy guns do plus 60% damage in total at 20% extra per perk card. This is really just for fun though, you cannot really play a character that walks around with a gatling laser, the plasma thrower or a minigun, at least for long because you'll burn through the ammo so fast. So it's one of those late game swap ins, but I wouldn't invest in this early on, but don't get me wrong, it's really fun to play a heavy gun build. Next, I'm going to go over all the strength perks that will affect your damage output, in addition to the ones we've already been over. Firstly, we have the Basher. Unlocked at level 11, at max rank 2, this perk card makes you do 50% more damage with weapon bashes, with a 10% chance to cripple your opponent. Now, it's, it's really very situational. For example, with the black powder rifle bayonet, which you can use while reloading to keep the enemy back, or you can hit them with a heavy gun, but I mean, there are better options there. The attack speed is so slow that you'll be lucky to hit or even cripple anyone, and it really just serves as a slight knockback. Next we have the martial artist, unlocked at level 16. At max rank 3, your melee weapons will weigh 60% less and swing 30% faster. You're going to want to definitely take this if you're using melee full stop. It's so good, it improves your damage per second massively, whether you're using one-handed or two-handed weapons. Also, because the weapon weighs less, it doesn't take as many action points to swing in VATS. It's kind of like a secret little add-on that this perk card gives you. Next, we have the Scattershot perk card, unlocked at level 18. At max rank 3, your shotguns weigh 90% less, and you reload them 30% faster. This perk again is helpful in VATS, and it's also good to have a better reload speed increase. But it takes up three whole perk card slots to do this, so I personally play without it, unless you're using the double-barreled shotgun, in which case it's really useful. At level 34, however, we unlock the Incisor perk. This is hands down what makes melee amazing in late game PvP. At max rank 3, your melee weapons ignore 75% of your target's armor. So they can be in full power armor and you just ignore 75% of that. That is mental. That's why I prefer melee over shotguns because of this perk. Then at level 37, you'll unlock the lock and load perk, which makes reloading heavy guns 30% faster, which is obviously very beneficial considering how long the reload speed is in the first place. Next, we have the damage resistance based perk cards. Firstly, unlocked at level 14 is Barbarian. Each point of strength adds 4 to your damage resistance up to a max of 80, and it does not work with power armor. So at 15 strength, you only actually get, which is as much as wearing a power armor frame. So you're going to need chems and alcohol to give you an extra 5 strength in order to get the full 80 damage resistance out of this perk card. The perk's okay, but it needs to be placed with the right build. It's more often going to be beneficial for you to be wearing power armor than not when using a melee build. The next perk is Blocker, unlocked at level 21 and maxed out at rank 3. It makes you take 45% less damage from your opponent's melee attacks. Now this perk is absolutely huge if you just want to play a tanky character, 
And to be honest, I'd rather have this perk than Basher if I was a heavy gunner. Because if anyone is up close to me, they're going to be doing literally no damage to me. For player versus environment though, this is also super useful because so many foes in the game only use melee attacks and this literally halves their damage, which is incredible. So even as a melee character, it's really useful. But next we have the bullet shield unlocked at level 39. It has a max rank of three and at max rank three, it gives you a extra 60 damage resistance while firing a heavy gun. That's on top of power armor, by the way, making it invaluable. But remember, it only gives you 60 damage resistance while you're actually firing your weapon. Next, we have a few utility perks. Firstly, the full charge perk unlocked at level 33. Sprinting in power armor now consumes half as much fusion core energy. And then at max rank, sprinting in power armor consumes no fusion core energy. Honestly, this is a complete waste of a perk. Fusion cores are so common in Fallout 76, I cannot go through them fast enough. I literally have 20 fusion cores and nowhere to store them anymore or anybody to sell them to because you can't sell them to vendors. So it's just a pointless perk, you don't need this. It's not like fusion cores are rare or anything. Next we have the Pain Train, unlocked at level 41. Now listen carefully because one point in this will damage and stagger enemies when you sprint into them while wearing power armor. That's so good for a melee or a shotgun build because you can interrupt reloads and literally everything. If you max out this perk, it says you will do devastating damage. I don't know how much damage devastating damage is, but to be honest with you, I'd only actually put one perk point into this perk card because all I'm going to use it for is stunning my foe. Basically, if I run up to someone in power armor and then stagger them, I will then hit them with my melee weapon. That's going to do the real damage. If somebody tries to block, just stagger them, or if they try and reload, just stagger them. It's so overpowered, but I'd only invest one perk point here. Any more isn't really needed, because your shotgun or melee weapon is going to be doing more damage. Okay, finally, we have the weight saving perks. And full disclaimer here, these perks are useful if you're running around scrapping and collecting materials, or you're just a hoarder. Yeah, you know who you are, and there's a lot of you who play this game and just feel the need to carry around 18 rocket launchers for that time where one breaks and you've got free spare. You crazy people know who you are. These kind of perks are okay while you're adventuring, but you definitely do not need them, nor are they really a great investment if you want to maximize your character's damage capabilities. But they are dead useful when exploring. So, unlocked at level 3 is the Traveling Pharmacy. Reduces the weight of all chems at max rank 3 by 90%. Bro, how many chems are you carrying around with you anyway? You should probably see somebody about that. That's not a good habit. Then Pack Rat unlocked at level seven at max rank. It reduces the weight of all junk by 75%. Now you can carry more desk fans to scavenge for screws. Hallelujah. Can I get an amen in the comment section? The next perk card is Sturdy Frame unlocked at level 13. This reduces your armor's weight by 25% or 50% at the max rank two. This perk is actually great, even with just one point in it for a non-strength based character, simply because armor is the heaviest thing you're going to be wearing unless you're wearing power armor, which overrides it, in which case this perk is pointless, but that's up to you. At level 22, you will unlock the Bandolier perk. At max rank two, it reduces the weight of all ammo by 90%. Obviously, this is invaluable if you're carrying around lots of rockets and mini nukes, by the way, because mini nukes weigh about six weight and rockets weigh two each, and that adds up so quickly. Then we have the strong backed perk, unlocked at level 26. This increases your carry weight by 10 for each point you invest into it, and then it maxes out at plus 40 carry weight. It's obviously great for getting around if you're slightly over encumbered, you can just swap in this perk card and you're sorted. Ordnance Express, unlocked at level 31. This is the coolest looking perk card ever. Look at the look at the picture for this. It looks great. It's like Thomas the Tank Engine's just delivering tons of bombs or something. At the max rank of three, though, it reduces the weight of explosives by 90%. So again, it's helpful if you like to carry around 50 grenades with you that you never ever use. Please throw them for once. 
But when you get to level 35, you unlock the bare arms, making heavy guns weigh 30% less. And this is actually really useful considering how heavy it is to lug around a rocket launcher and a minigun and every other big gun that you have and need to carry around with you for some reason. So there we have it, all 30 perk cards reviewed and explained. And if you want my suggestion on builds or other perk special stats that are worth picking, check out my playlist linked below. You can find everything in that playlist guys i've even got some other playlists on where to find all the unique weapons and stuff as well they're linked down below in the description of course and if you guys want a special gift then i suggest you subscribe and i will send you a free spaceship in the mail guaranteed first class delivery if you also press that bell icon as well then youtube will send you a notification every time i publish a new video just for you let me know in the comments section what you want me to cover next and I will try my best to do that. I am making videos flat out for you guys and my girlfriend is helping me out editing them. So give her a thanks as well in the comments section because I really appreciate that. She's awesome. I will see you in the next video guys. Goodbye and have a fantastic day.